All right, what's going on, Black One? I'm gonna try to keep this straight and to the point. First off, I hope your claim of being a gaming whore is true, and by that I mean that the console wouldn't matter as long as the games are good. You know, true gamers don't really give a shit or don't have one brand loyalty to you know, be it Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo. Me personally, I'm coming from a PC background. I started gaming on a PC. Or at that point, would have been DOS. DOS. Um, you know, back when we had the good old 5 inch floppy disk. That's how I started gaming. Things like the Atari 8 bit. I own every console that I can possibly think of from the Atari 8-bit up to current gens. I own handhelds you've probably never even heard of. Because I'm a gamer. I like gaming. Just as an example. Handhelds that I have, Game Gear, Wonder Swan, all the Game Boys you can think of. I have them. You know, things like the Engage. I have things like friggin' uh, Game Park 30, uh, Game Park 32, and all these other things because it's part of gaming history. You know, I I own the Nintendo, all the Nintendos. I own the Atari, the Jaguar, the CD add-ons. You know, all the Genesis crap and all their 16 and 32 bit additions they decided to go through. You know, I got the Master System. You know, PS1, 64, PS2, GameCube, the Xbox, and up to the current generation of crap. At the end of the day, it's about what the hell trips your trigger for gaming on. You know, not everyone's going to like the PS3, not everyone's going to like the 360. I own both. I don't own a Wii because really no game really um, does anything for me. The only game that interests me, which I already played, was Metroid. That's just me. So, let's get on to some of the stuff you talk about in your video. You talk about multi-platform games sucking more on the PS3 than they do on the 360. Well, no shit, because the 360 is basically PC to PC. So if they're programming on a PC and they ship it to a, on into a 360, it's pretty much the same game that it was on a PC. The PS3 is a different freaking architecture, so no crap, it's going to be crappier coding. Because their coding is meant for a tricore system, basically, which is essentially what the 360 runs as. PS3 has a main processor with separate SKUs onto it that queue up its own... Uh, into the main processor. So, did Sony screw up on launch? Yeah, they did. High end technology put out way too early at too high of a cost. I won't lie. Thing is, I spent the 600 bucks on that because I had a feeling backwards compatibility would become a non issue later. Because if I remember correctly, Microsoft didn't have any backwards compatibility when they launched. And they said, oh yeah, we're going to um, do some software emulation for backwards compatibility. At least when I bought mine, 90, 95% of my games played that are backwards compatible. I can stick a PS2 game in mine and more than likely it will play. Because why? Because Sony at least had the thought enough to actually, you know put in essentially a PS2 inside the PS3 Microsoft didn't quite think that far ahead you know and you know you can talk up live all you want I've played on live I'm coming from a PC background live is not PC if people are coming from a computer background as far as their gaming, PC-wise, they're going to want to lean more towards Sony because that's about the way 
PC gamers view it. You know, PC gamers tend to view multiplayer as like essential. It, it's part of the game. You know, why the hell am I paying to play online? You know, yeah, it might be five bucks a month, or you know, if you're buying uh, fifty bucks a year, whatever. But most people that are coming from PC gaming are gonna be like, why the hell am I paying for, you know, dealing with tweeners? Because that's what a lot of the atmosphere on live is. is a, a lot of, you know, oh, pwned crap. You know, or you got a lot of freaking like twelve-year-olds swearing their hat off because they have nothing better to say. I don't get that atmosphere out of PS3 as much. They're still there, but not as much. And for a company that sells themselves as the premier online console experience, you think they could have included a damn Wi-Fi chip? You know, I can go out and buy a $400 laptop that at least has a fucking Wi-Fi chip. <laughs> that will play certain games so if I'm going to go and spend 400 bucks like I did when I bought my 360 they couldn't include at least a, you know, a wireless B so instead I have to go and spend you know 50 to 100 bucks on a wireless adapter that's specifically made for the 360 or, oh, if you want a bigger hard drive, oh, you can't buy a laptop hard drive. You have to buy a specific proprietary-based hard drive that Microsoft wants you to spend 120 bucks for. Or 100 bucks for now. You know, give me a break. Oh, and if you want HDMI, you actually have to buy the Elite, which is $400 now. It's actually cheaper now, but at that point. So, you know... Gaming library at launch. Give me a good game for the 360 at launch. The only game that I got at launch that interests me at all was Cameo. That was it. Perfect dark. It's just like every other FPS I ever played. And even the almighty god of F FPSs for console, Halo, is the same. Everything has been done has been done in another game. So the fact of the matter is, you know, you can talk about better launches, you can talk about certain gaming systems being better. At the end of the day, get what works for you. If PC gaming works for you, fine. If, you know, PS3, a Wii, or a 360, you know, what games interest you? That's how you tell who's a real gamer, who's a game, or is it, you like to say, a gaming for. That's how you tell. Not by, you know, saying this system is better because of X, Y, and Z. That just makes you a fanboy, regardless of how much people want to try to deny it. 